Hello everyone, I'm back. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers for your patience. Um, I know you've been waiting for updates. Um, I just needed a bit of time to concentrate on recovery and uh, I also didn't really want to look at the footage that I'd taken in hospital until until fairly recently. So yeah, I just needed needed a few weeks. So it's four, it's four weeks now since my surgery. And for anyone new here, just to quickly, very quickly go over um, what I've been going through. So I was diagnosed with neuroendocrine cancer in January of this year. So that meant I had a primary tumour in my small intestines that had spread to nearby lymph nodes and also into my liver. So in April, I had my primary tumour removed along with the lymph nodes. And then this surgery, which I'm going to share with you today, is about getting rid of the tumours that had spread to my liver. So I'm having a liver resection. So roughly 70 to 75% of my original liver is is or I suppose was removed. Um, so to tell the story we need to go back to Thursday August the 12th which is the day before my surgery so I had to go in the day before in order to get a, an IV infusion of a particular drug to stop my hormone uh, to stop my tumours releasing certain hormones during my operation which could cause some issues. Um, I do want to just very quickly say I do have I do have a few issues during my time in the hospital. Things don't go particularly smoothly, um, but I don't want that to scare anyone who might be awaiting a similar operation or, or going in for a big operation. Challenges do happen when you're in hospital. Obviously, it's not an easy thing, but uh, you know, I got through it. And if I was told I had to do it again, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. So, yeah, don't let this uh, let this video scare you too much. Anyway. Let's go back to Thursday the 12th of August. I made it, I'm in hospital. All booked in, on the ward. I had to say goodbye to Jenny, which is obviously horrible because we can't have visitors. Um, but I do have my own room. I'm living in luxury. Got an ensuite. Got my own window. I've even got my own clock. I mean, what more can you ask for? Whoops, got too cocky. I've just been told by a nurse that it's likely to go one night in here, then ITU after my operation, and then to Bay 1 um, after ITU. Bay, Bay 1 is where I was last time with the six beds in it. So yeah, I'll enjoy this tonight. I think it's just by chance that I'm in here tonight. But who knows, things can change. We'll see. Well, I was right about one thing and the situation did change and it turned out that they did need my room. For another patient so I was actually carted off to a short stay ward where I'd spend the night and I no longer had an ensuite. I didn't have my own clock and my view was downgraded from one looking over rooftops and parks to a great view of the bins. But anyway it didn't really matter too much and I was swiftly hooked up to my IV infusion of octreotide, given my last meal and fed a lovely preload drink. It wasn't long before it was time to try and bed down for the night and get as much sleep as I could. And inevitably that sleep was rather broken, but it did turn out to be the best sleep I had for the entire nine days I was in hospital. So it's the morning of, I think I'm gonna be going off my operation in about 45 minutes time. So it's all gonna start happening pretty quickly soon. Let's do this. So at this point I was wheeled off to theatres and I met with the an anaesthetic team and it was their plan to put in an epidural. So kind of like a, they put a needle into your spine in order to give you some medication to numb you from that point downwards. And that's done very commonly with these sort of abdominal surgeries, um, which is particularly helpful to sort of mask any pain when you're woken up. And then uh, they keep you, keep you on the epidural usually for a few days and gradually bring you, bring you off that epidural to gradually introduce you to the, to the pain, I suppose. So yeah, from sort of the start to finish with my epidural, I had problems. So they found it, found it quite difficult to get the epidural actually into my spine. Um, and the previous surgery I had in April it was a similar kind of story really. They found it difficult then and I was told I had quite, quite hard ligaments in my spine, which I suppose is a good thing apart from when you need to have an epidural. Um, but yeah, they was kind of prodded with this needle maybe seven or eight times with them struggling to get it into place. Um, and then eventually they were happy that they'd got it in. 
and this is all done before you're put to sleep. And then, uh, yeah, they, they consulted me with, as to what music they could play whilst I was asleep. They said, do you mind if we play country music? And you know, I was like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and I thought maybe it would mean I'll, I'll wake up after my operation with a new love of, of country music. I um, haven't actually tried that out yet. Maybe I'll play some country music sometime this afternoon, see if I love it. Um, but yeah, and shortly after I was, I was put to sleep. And then, uh, yeah, seven hours later, or roughly seven hours later, I was, I was brought round and uh, thankfully, it's quite a blurry time, a bit of a blurry memory this one, but I woke up uh, in quite a lot of pain because unfortunately the epidural had failed and I had a very small bit of numbing to the left side of my abdomen, but of course where the liver is and where all my whole operation had happened was on the right side of my abdomen, so I was getting no epidural coverage. And uh, yeah, I just remember kind of waking up, uh, shaking a lot and sort of shouting out for them to put me back to sleep which uh, is a bit dramatic really, isn't it? But yeah, it was, it was quite excruciating. But as I say, thankfully, a bit of a blurry memory. Uh, I'm not quite sure, sure what they did exactly, but I think they just pumped me full of, full of drugs and, uh, and went from there. But yeah, let's, let's go back to me uh, several hours after that point. guys first off I am sorry about the lighting situation but it's day four early in the morning in intensive care here after my operation up to this point it's been very difficult to film until now really I did get the news that they took out all the tumors that they needed to take out Obviously, the news I wanted to hear. So they did a right-sided epidectomy, extended into the caudate lobe, and also some new news for me as well was that he noticed a grey spot in the section four, which is on the left-hand side of the liver. Um, just from one of the scans that they did <coughs> or one of the last scans that they did so he did an ultrasound on that side of the liver to try and figure out if it needed to be removed and uh, he wasn't sure so he removed it anyway so he's got rid of that as well so quite a bit quite a bit of liver's gone in the bin well I say in the bin that's now gone off to labs um, just to double check that it's linked to my primary tumour and also um, talk of this micro disease um, was back so not that he thinks I've got this micro disease necessarily but they can look into the tissue of the liver a bit more closely and just make sure that I haven't got the micro disease so fingers crossed that's probably the one thing that's worrying me at the moment and the reason why I'm not you know, jumping for joy at the moment Although well, I am pleased, obviously, that everything's gone well. Also, I was given some quite strong painkillers to a point where I couldn't really open my eyes. I was just absolutely exhausted. So the last sort of 24 hours, I guess, I've not had any painkillers. Um, because they were doing more harm than good almost. I've got pain now, but I'd rather a little bit of pain and the feeling I had with that because I wasn't actually able to get out of my bed as well which has been a bit of a um, as well, disaster so it's too strong a word but it's not been very helpful at all so on Saturday so the day after my operation I sat up in bed and went dizzy and my blood pressure went down to 70 systolic so 70 on the top number so yeah, I was very close to passing out. So Saturday was a day I didn't manage to get out of bed. Yesterday, through Sunday, I managed to stand up and yeah, I was retching. And my systolic went down to about 80. But today, 
I really do need to try and get up and walk around because I want to get out of intensive care now uh, and get up on the ward because that would be one step closer to being home. Now I just want to explain this a little bit further because it may seem a little bit mad that I stopped the painkillers and perhaps it was but there was there was thought behind it. My body clearly doesn't respond very well to strong painkillers particularly opiate based painkillers like morphine or, or tramadol. When I refer to feeling completely exhausted I had this sensation of not being able to open my eyes because I felt so 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 tired but at the same time I wasn't actually able to fall asleep so it felt almost like like a form of torture but the big problem really was not being able to to get out of bed because every time I sat up you know I was close to fainting and that, that was that was a real problem because I had people coming around telling me that I needed to get out of bed in order to kick start my recovery but I just couldn't do it so coupled with that also I was able, I was struggling to get fluids and any food down me because I felt very very nauseous despite that sort of anti-sickness medication I think part of that reason might be because when you get the right side of your liver removed they also take away your gallbladder so my body was also trying to adjust to that factor so my digestion was obviously not going to be going as smoothly as it it should be um, as my body adjusted to not having a gallbladder so at the same time I was getting back sort of abnormal blood test results showing that I was deficient in quite a lot of things so I was continuously hit, like hooked up to um, IV electrolytes um, in order to, to make sure I was getting enough of those on board. I wasn't able to take any strong anti-inflammatory medications because my blood tests were showing that my haemoglobin levels were low as, along with my platelets so due to the increased risk of bleeding they stopped the anti-inflammatory medications as well. So yeah, it was kind of at this point where I thought this, is, this isn't going too well. My recovery's not really even started now. And I'm a long, long way from getting home. And I knew the importance of, of getting up and moving around. I know, I know that's very important. It's actually quite dangerous if you just stay in bed um, for long, long periods of time after a surgery. So that's why I decided to, to come off the medication, the uh, painkillers. On day six, I think it was, I did start sort of half doses of paracetamol, um, I think is, is it Tenolol in America, um, IV, uh, just to try and mask some of the pain a little bit. I was only allowed a half dose because I had a small small bit of liver left and uh, paracetamol is metabolised in the liver so they didn't want to put any extra strain on the liver. So yeah, a little bit complicated and a little bit of a challenge. Um, but yeah, just wanted to explain that a little bit further. Got, got a lot of things to come out before I can get up on the ward. A little catheter. Oh, I suppose that can stay actually, but catheter, the epidural, um, central line, which is that one, and arterial line. Not where I. So they'll all be coming out today. I did have a chest drain in. That's been that's come out already. That feels weird coming up, I have to say. it's sometime later I can't even remember when I last talked to you to be honest with you uh, the last few days have been a bit rough uh, yeah so after my operation I was allowed to, to eat things quite quickly 
um, and obviously without going crazy. And what I was finding was that my stomach was getting, or my abdomen was getting very distended. And wasn't nothing was passing through at all. Uh, so I was quite quickly put back onto fluids, and then I've woken up feeling a bit better today. today. And um, I'm going to be, well, I'm going to try. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, tiring work this. <laughs> I'm going to try some uh, fluids with some more sustenance to them. I've just seen the dietary team because I'm not I haven't been getting the sort of meeting my dietary requirements since my operation, so they're they're kind of aware of it and there's a chance that I will eventually have to get some feed through here, but they want to avoid that if they can. Hope so. Hopefully, in the next couple of days things go well. I managed to get some fluids down me properly and get some food, a little bit of food in me, and then they'll be happy and can discharge me. Um, apparently, I'm getting a CT scan today as well, just to check there's nothing blocking that bit of bowel or anything like that. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's tough. This <laughs> knew it was going to be. Uh, hopefully, I'm over the worst of it now. Yeah. Anyway, I may have gone over some things I've already talked about. I don't know. It's when you're in this place, it's time goes very slowly and it all kind of overlaps and it's difficult to know what's going on half the time. But yeah, that's the news. It's time I got home. I can see Jenny. I need my comforts. Some decent food. So I was taken down in a wheelchair to the front of the hospital where Jenny was waiting for me and it felt like we'd been apart for much longer than nine days and I was so relieved to be with her and on my way home. And I was very, very thankful as I traveled home to my surgeon and the staff involved with getting me through my operation and the time in hospital. Those nine days were certainly difficult and I faced quite a few challenges, but you know, as humans, we are resilient. And even if you doubt that about yourself, I promise you'll find the strength to get through whatever hurdles are in your path and soon those difficult memories start to fade and even become a source of strength. So four weeks after my surgery, I may still feel quite physically weak, but I will forever be able to draw on those experiences and get strength from the fact that I got through those nine days. So what's next for me? Well, I'm waiting for my follow-up appointments. I don't have my lab test results back yet. And I'm yet to have my follow-up scans, but that will all come in the future. I'm definitely not back to my normal self yet, but I am getting stronger every day, so I would say my recovery is, is going well. But I will talk about that a bit more in some future videos. This video I'm going to leave here now. Thank you very much for following along. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it'd be awesome if you could subscribe, because yeah, there'll be some more regular uploads in the future. And now I've got through those sort of difficult first few weeks of recovering. Thanks again, guys, for all your support. Honestly, it means a lot. And I'll catch you in the next video.